Hello and welcome back to the fourth instalment of my failed franchises series. In this series, I look at failed rail franchises, whether this be their contract being stripped from them or the franchise simply being deemed poor by the public and industry. This being today's franchise, Arriva Trains Wales. Although their franchise was not stripped by the government, they were heavily scrutinised by the public and industry alike. But was this scrutiny deserved? Were Arriva Trains Wales really that bad? And should they be classified as a failed franchise? Find out in today's video. Just before this video starts, I just want to preemptively apologise for my Welsh pronunciation. I hope you enjoyed the video nevertheless, and let's get into it. During the privatisation of Britain's railway network in the late 1990s, there was much debate over how Wales's franchises should be organised. Eventually, it was decided that Wales would be split into three franchises. First North Western, who would operate the North West section of England and Northern Wales to Holyhead. Then there was the Valley Lines franchises for local services in and around Cardiff. Finally, the Wales and West franchise served the remainder of South and West Wales, as well as areas in South West England. Also, Central Trains operated the Cambrian coastline over to Aberystwyth. In 2000, the Strategic Rail Authority announced it wanted a single All Wales franchise, with the Wales and West branding being dropped and the Valley Lines Company taking over all of the Wales and West franchise operations, the Cambrian Line, part of Central Trains, and First North Western services along the North Wales coast, along to Wrexham and later in 2003, along to Manchester and Birmingham. This new joint Wales franchise was named Wales and Borders. The previous Wales and West services that operate in the south of England were incorporated into the new Wessex Trains franchise and later into the Great Western franchise. First North Western services were eventually incorporated into the Trans Pennine Express and Northern franchises, both of which I've made videos on. The Wales and Border Train Operating Company was launched in October 2001, but this didn't last long. By 2003, the franchise contract was up for grabs and was won by Arriva with them branding themselves as Arriva Trains Wales. Arriva promised a more integrated Welsh transport network, as well as focusing on providing services using the Welsh language, as well as the English one. Also, Arriva Trains Wales, or ATW, as I will refer to them in this video, promised to introduce seven more Class 150s to increase capacity. Also, they would make a new simplified timetable, as well as abolishing the £1 cycle reservation system and improve compensation schemes for passengers. The Strategic Rail Authority believed ATW would help to create a more integrated Welsh franchise. In December 2003, ATW commenced on what would be a 15-year contract until 2018. Arriva Trains Wales operated services along North Wales, Mid Wales, South Wales and in and around Cardiff. In North Wales, services ran from Holyhead and Clandudno towards Shrewsbury, Birmingham and Cardiff, as well as shuttle services along the Conway Valley Line to Blanolfest and York. As well as this, Arriva Trains Wales ran services along the Borderlands Line from Wrexham to Bidston, with connections onwards to Liverpool. In Mid Wales, services ran along the Cambrian Line from Aberystwyth, Fwelly and Machlinef towards Shrewsbury and Birmingham New Street, extending to Birmingham International in 2008 due to the busyness of New Street. Also, ATW operated the remote Heart of Wales Line several times a day, running from Shrewsbury to Swansea via Chengindrod and Chanefli with the line being popular for its stunning scenery. In the south, ATW operated hourly from Carmarthen to Manchester via Cardiff, as well as services from Fishguard, Tenby and Milford Haven. ATW also operated hourly along the Swan Line between Swansea and Cardiff. In Cardiff and the Valleys, Arriva Trains Wales operated an intense half-hourly service from Pontypridd to Treherbert, Abachron to Aberdeer, Abachron to Murphy Tidfil, and later Balgwerd to Rimney, as well as services to Penarth. Arriva Trains Wales upgraded the timetable to introduce up to six trains an hour between Pontypridd and Cardiff, and four trains an hour from Barguet to Cardiff. Arriva Trains Wales also upgraded several stations on the Treherbert and Rimley lines to accommodate six-car trains. ATW also operated some services from Carmarthen and Swansea to Brighton, Bristol, Portsmouth, Plymouth and Penzance via Cardiff. Eventually, Great Western Railway took over the running of these services. Arriva Trains Wales operated all services in Wales except for some Great Western Railway, Cross Country and Verdon Trains routes. By 2004, ATW had achieved one of its main goals, to include more bilingual signage 
and include well-spoken customer service. Bilingual signs were introduced in all Welsh stations where the name differed from the English one, and a Welsh telephone line was introduced in 2004, which won the best Welsh website of 2004. A year later, the Glamorgan line was reopened to passenger traffic for the first time in 40 years. The line from Bridgend to Cardiff via Roos Cardiff International Airport opened on the 10th of June 2005, costing £17 million. The line did have some controversy, mostly due to the lack of frequency on the line, having just one train an hour, with the Welsh Conservative Party suggesting that it lacked ambition. In 2006, the Transport Wales Act was passed, putting all responsibilities for the franchise in the government's hand, with the government closely coordinating operations with Arriva Trains Wales. This saw direct services between North and South Wales reintroduced, and, in 2008, another major line was reopened, the line to Ebb Vale. Ebb Vale Parkway opening on 6 of February 2008, with the route finally extended to Ebb Vale Town in May 2015. New stations were built at Clanhilliff, Newbridge, Crosskeys, Risk and Pontymister, Rogerston and Pie Corner in 2014. The line was a huge success and smashed all targets, achieving over 570,000 passenger journeys in its first full year of operations. In 2008, Arriva launched a new premier service between Holyhead and Cardiff. The service, originally named Gerald of Wales, was funded by the Welsh Government as a premium way of travelling the long journey between North and South Wales. Arriva Trains Wales subleased four Class 57 locos from Virgin West Coast, with one Mark III carriage and three Mark II coaches. In 2012, the service was upgraded, with Class 67s taking over from the 57s and newer Mark III's replacing the remainder of the Mark IIs, running now with a driving van trailer. Also in 2012, the route was rerouted to avoid crew, and now called via Wrexham General and Chester. Under ATW, the Premier Services, and later the Business Class Services, renamed to promote business travellers, ran up to twice a day, with 0532 and 0751 Hollyhead departures bound for Cardiff and a 1615 and 1818 return services to Holyhead. In 2014, a third Mark III set was introduced to run from Holyhead to Manchester. The services were popular and still operates with Transport for Wales today, using Mark IVs instead of Mark Threes. In 2009, Arriva Trains Wales attempted to gain a permission from the government to run a service from Aberystwyth to London Marylebone via Birmingham International and Leamington Spa. Two services would have ran per day, with additional services on weekends and summer. Sadly, however, the government was concerned that they would directly compete and possibly outcompete the Wrexham and Shropshire Open Access Train Operating Company, and wouldn't allow the operator to be profitable. In March 2010, for competition reasons, Arriva's bid was rejected. Ironically, Wrexham and Shropshire ceased operations just a year later. Perhaps a failed franchise video in the future? The first few years for Arriva Trains Wales weren't too dreadful. They completed most of their franchise obligations and improved the timetable for most journeys. However, for passengers, the rolling stock let Arriva down. They inherited a fleet of all diesel multiple units, excluding the Premier Service, and these all dated from the mid-1980s and 1990s. The infamous Pacer trains, Class 142 and 143s, operated local services in and around the Welsh capital with the 30 Pacers roughly following the operations of the former Valley Lines company. Arriva Trains Wales also inherited 29 Class 150s, adding another 7 shortly after beginning operations, with these units being used across the network, being able to operate to most locations on the Arriva Trains Wales network, including services to Manchester and Birmingham, which they really weren't intended to do. The similar Class 153s also followed the same deployment methods, but mostly stuck to less intensive routes where possible, due to the class only having one car per train, such as the Curriton branch and services on along the Heart of Wales line. Arriva Trains Wales also operated Class 158s. These operated on the Birmingham to Aberystwyth routes and were the only train to be able to be operated along these lines due to the ECTS requirements along the Cambrian line. The 158s also operated services across Wales and England, being suitable for more long-distance regional services. This also related to the Class 175s, built in the late 90s and early noughties. The 27 DMUs operated exclusively on regional services across Wales and into England. However, at first, Arriva Trains Wales had to share the units with the brand new first Transparent Express franchise, until Transparent Express got the new Class 185s delivered. First Transparent Express required 11 units per day. 
In 2006, ATW purchased a Class 121 bubble car unit for shuttles from Cardiff Bay to Cardiff Queen Street to free up a Class 153 or 150. This bubble car service ran until severe failure of the unit in 2013, led to it being sold to sister company Chilton as spare parts to keep running their microfleet of Class 121s. This relatively old fleet was by no means dreadful, but local services, especially on the Pacers, were deeply unpopular, with most services being very busy due to unprecedented passenger growth, rising above 30 million passengers for the first time ever in 2015. However busy though, ATW were relatively reliable, averaging around a 90% on time rate in their first six years of operations, climbing all the way up to 96% in 2014. Back to chronological order though. In 2014, ATW increased services on the Cambrian and Heart of Wales lines. Arriva Trains Wales introduced hourly peak services between Aberystwyth and Shrewsbury, and more evening services on the Cambrian coast between Barmouth and Fwelly. Arriva Trains Wales also introduced an extra journey from Clandovery to Swansea and between Clandrindrod and Crewe via Shrewsbury along the Heart of Wales line. The move came to improve connections along the Cambrian coast, especially for students at Aberystwyth University. To introduce the hourly services along the Cambrian coast, Network Rail had to close five lower crossings along the line. However, although these improvements were deemed a success, the improvements to the Premier service to all Mark III operations proved to be a little more chaotic. In September 2014, a door on one of the Mark III coaches was ripped off its hinges in a tunnel whilst running in the Bangor area, on a peak time service towards Cardiff. Although no injuries occurred, it did hint at poor ATW maintenance on its trains, and if the service was overcrowded, which it usually was, then the outcome could have been far worse. Arriva Trains Wales said that safety was their priority, and there was no similar other incidents throughout ATW's remaining years of service, although the incident shouldn't have happened in the first place. 2014 was the year services really began to decline, with overcrowding now being publicly reported in mainstream news due to the frequency and level of overcrowding. ATW issued a public apology in November 2014, following high levels of overcrowding in the previous month. ATW blamed leaves on the line, trains hitting trees, and freight trains breaking down, leading to a reduced number of trains being able to be deployed each day, and services being curtailed frequently. Arriva Trains Wales had to take stock from local services to be used to run on regional services due to its lack of stock. This lack of stock was caused by leaves on the line affecting the wheels on the train, leading to far more repairs than usual. As well as this, two Class 175s had serious maintenance issues from hitting a tree. The overcrowding had led to poor publicity and seriously hindered the reputation of ATW. This was exacerbated by a 48-hour RMT strike that occurred in November 2015. The RMT claimed that ATW hadn't made an adequate pay offer to its staff, despite the RMT postponing previous strikes to allow talks to take place. The 48-hour strike led to all RMT drivers told not to book for any duty between Thursday and Friday, with many services cancelled or curtailed and some stations not receiving a single rail service on the two days. In 2015, upgrades to the line between Wrexham and Chester were also delayed until 2017, despite being given the go-ahead all the way back in 2013. The upgrades would see a 5.5 mile stretch of track between Vosset and Saltney doubled to enable an hourly service to run. Several level crossings were also planned to be upgraded as part of the project, costing £44 million. This led to overcrowding on services along the line, services being far more infrequent than they should be, and general passenger unsatisfaction. A year later in 2016, four of the Class 175s ATW operated were forced to be taken out of service due to corrosion issues with the fleet. As well as this, all the Class 150s had corrosion problems, with the whole fleet undergoing repairs across 2016, leading to huge capacity shortages, with ATW, for whatever reason, unable to run their loco stock at weekends to boost capacity, most likely due to lack of crews trained on the sets. Arriva Trains Wales used all available units per day to meet capacity demand. So, some 175s and 150s being out of service was detrimental to the service. Although ATW managed to fix repairs to the 175s and 150s by the summer, just a few months later, the yearly reports were out regarding the company's finances. They recorded that Arriva Trains Wales made a huge 6.9% profit after tax, nearly double the amount that other companies of similar sizes made. Economy Minister Ken Skates suggested Arriva Trains Wales were galling for government investment, 
when it was totally not needed. The franchise was already the most heavily subsidised in the UK, receiving up to £160 million a year. Aviva combated high profits by highlighting how they had invested more money than stated in their contract, and the 2003 franchise failed to anticipate the high passenger growth that Wales had seen. The company was featured in a BBC Wales programme, Week In, Week Out, which saw the company slammed for high profits and overcrowding in Cardiff, with overcrowding rising at a faster rate than anywhere outside of London. The high passenger numbers, an 11 million increase from 2003 to 2017, had led to huge profits for the company and huge overcrowding. Aviva had suggested that they operated 20% more services than contractually stated and had invested £32.5 million since 2003. Arriva was also slated for their terrible facilitation of events held in Cardiff, such as the Six Nations and the 2016 Rugby World Cup. Arriva Trains Wales forced 70,000 fans to wait queuing outside in the pouring rain for hours, however were praised for their customer service and people management on event days. Despite intense overcrowding, Arriva also stabbed at Network Rail and their delays in electrification projects across the UK, suggesting that this had led to a huge diesel stock shortage, which is by no means incorrect. ATW also operated the UK's oldest rolling stock by average age, with the contract not facilitating any new rolling stock. Services on the Ebb Vale line were so unreliable that most services arrived at least 30 minutes delayed. Network Rail only invested 1% of its annual budget in Wales, despite the country being home to 6% of all rail infrastructure. The announcement of the South Wales Metro by the government in 2017 did bring hope to passengers, but it would not be started until Arriva's contract was over in 2018. 2017 was by far the worst year to date for Arriva Trains Wales and their operations. With just a year left on their contract, they had no interest in upgrading their rolling stock or investing in the service. In September 2017, YouTuber Stuart Thomas reviewed ATW on his Stu's Reviews series. In the episode, he looked at the intense overcrowding and poor fleet conditions in Cardiff with Stuart himself affected by Arriva Trains Wales, with him commuting from Mountain Ash to University each day. In the review, he even caught a passenger fainting, as you're seeing on screen now. I think someone might be... Has someone actually fainted? Someone has actually just fainted, and that is not a lie. Morning, you've got to find out if you've been taking an ill now, or you've got to be waiting on Amber. Stuart highlighted how he hoped the next franchise would help change things on the network and would be a chance to start fresh. Commuting in South Wales was not at all a good thing. Arriva Trains Wales reported that since 2013 there had been a rise of 250,000 commuters, with rolling stock increases being highly minimal. Aging Pacers and Class 150s were by no means fit for purpose on the railways, with the Pacers being slated for their poor accessibility and terrible ride quality. Passengers described the service as absolutely horrendous and utterly shambolic. Another commuter suggested it was only a matter of time before there was a serious accident from the overcrowding, with another commuter highlighting how every day he was packed in the train like cattle, with little breathing room. ATW once again fell back on the contract being poorly written and the fact that Arriva Trains Wales had completed several modernisation schemes and had refurbished all their rolling stock. In May 2017, ATW upgraded their Cardiff timetable to enable 127 more trains to run, with 600 extra seats into Cardiff per day, but suggested storms such as Storm Eileen had set them back. Arriva Trains Wales also blamed Network Rail engineering overruns, which led to some stock being unable to leave depots across the network. ATW did, however, acknowledge the uncomfortable conditions on their trains. In October 2017, Welsh rail passengers were greeted by good news, Arriva had decided to drop out of the running for the contract in 2018. They stated that it had not been an easy decision and they were proud to have provided services in Wales since 2003. Wrexham Member of Parliament Ian Lucas said few tears will be shed, with him highlighting how Wales needed an imaginative franchise holder to enable the South Wales Metro to be fulfilled. Keolis Amy won the new franchise and promised 148 brand new trains by 2023. However, after this announcement, Arriva was put in some good light for the first time in several years. Arriva Trains Wales had finished 2017 as the UK's most reliable operator, with 273,000 services arriving on time, 82.8% across the year. ATW rose the number of services in Wales to over 1,000 a day, the highest since the 1960s, 
Although ATW ended their last full year strong, their last few months in operation were highly eventful. Just before we get into Reva Trains Wales' last few months, do consider subscribing, checking out my full series and joining or donating to the channel if you're enjoying this video. A huge thank you to my members, Jack's Railway Secrets, JMSF and Louis Donnellan. You can join them from as little as £2.99 a month and get early access, shout outs in all videos, access to private Discord channels and more. Also, thanks to my donators, Clive's Travel and Trains, Deva Rooney, G Patterson and Swansea Valley Bus Spotter, who without these videos would be impossible to make. Thank you everyone, and let's look at Reva Trains Wales' last few months of operation. Figures in January 2018 saw that only 79% of passengers were satisfied with Reva Trains Wales' service, just 7% higher than Southern, who were considered, at the time, the worst operator in the UK. Just 54% deemed Reva Trains Wales value for money, 7% lower than 2016, and just 57% were content at overcrowding levels, compared to 91% at Virgin. A month later, Arriva Trains Wales suspended several long-distance services as all 27 Class 175s were taken out of service over severe wheel damage. The majority of services between North Wales, West Wales and along the marches around Shrewsbury were suspended. This hugely affected passengers for several days and led to a surge in complaints, a 30% rise. 66 complaints per 100,000 journeys were recorded, the sixth highest in Great Britain. Punctuality, complaints and cancellations were to blame. Arriva blamed these cancellations on the Class 175 maintenance issues and adverse weather conditions at the start of 2018. ATW also had a poor rate of dealing with complaints, with only 76% of complaints being handled within 20 days. However, 92.2% of services ran on time, 0.4% higher than 2017. Another negative before Arriva Trains Wales departed pun totally intended, was how they dealt with lost wallets. Before September 2018, any wallets lost on Arriva's services were not handed out freely to their owners once found. Instead, ATW charged the owners £2 per wallet, plus pocketing 10% of any cash inside. The policy was only reversed after it got social media presence on Twitter, with one tweet reaching nearly 1,000 likes on the topic. For Arriva Trains Wales though, this was the last of any problems, with them being the operator, as, on the 14th of October 2018, Arriva Trains Wales handed over all operations to the new franchise named Transport for Wales. In its 15 years of operations, Arriva Trains Wales had been through many lows, usually overcrowding and unsuitable rolling stock. However, the company, with support from Network Rail, the government and EU funding, did progress with a lot of their promises, and more. Arriva Trains Wales had helped complete several projects, such as major redesigns of Newport, Swansea, Bridgend and Port Talbot, station refurbishments at Clanefley, Shrewsbury and Colwyn Bay, all in 2018 alone, the addition of step-free access at 13 stations, 168 stations receiving new information screens, 45 new station shelters, hundreds of ticket machines, car parking spaces and secure cycle storage, new stations at Fishgarden and Goodwick, Enneglin and Churchill Park and a Clanharan, a second platform installed at Gowerton, the £100 million investment of the Ebb Vale line, and finally a refurbishment of their whole fleet, including the Class 142, 150, 158 and 175s. From where Reva Trains Wales began, they had come a long way and achieved a lot. Although services were overcrowded and often delayed, some of those services wouldn't have run without a Reva Trains Wales. Arriva Trains Wales also achieved perhaps the main aim, linking Wales. They had created a unified Welsh network under a successful, singular brand, increasing services across the nation. Professors of transport at the University of South Wales were surprised Arriva Trains Wales did so well, managing to run a reliable and intense service with quite old stock. For some, it was sad to see Arriva Trains Wales leave. For more, though, it was a chance to trust rail again under a new operator, this was confirmed when many people celebrated the new Keolis Amy Transport for Wales franchise. A party was held in central Cardiff, for example. The new franchise promised to replace all of their fleet with brand new trains, which would also see the Pacers replaced fully by 2020. However, this new operator, TFW, had a pretty shaky start to life. In November 2018, a quarter of all Transport for Wales trains were put out of service due to huge repair backlogs. 36 out of 127 trains were out of service, 
and although TFW didn't point a finger at AATW's maintenance, they did emphasise the age of the fleet they had inherited, and the below par maintenance of units. Arriva Trains Wales highlighted how they went above and beyond to ensure a smooth handover and ensure high stock maintenance. However, TFW did suffer with maintenance issues, with Arriva Trains Wales probably to blame for this. James Price, Chief Executive of Transport for Wales, said that TFW's fleet was not maintained quite as well as it could have been by Arriva Trains Wales, with it being a bit worse than we thought. It was later found out by Ken Skates that Arriva Trains Wales carried out the bare minimum when it came to maintenance contractual obligations. Former Arriva Trains Wales Managing Director, now at Cross Country, Tom Joyner, said it was the smoothest franchise handover he had ever seen, with him suggesting TFW visited Arriva Trains Wales Cardiff Canton Depot and did not see any sign of being unimpressed, although whether TFW visited any other Arriva Trains Wales depots is unclear. Eventually, Bill Kelly from Network Rail took the hit and apologised to Transport for Wales passengers, with him rightly highlighting how passengers weren't interested in excuses, but action. Eventually, the squabbling and arguing between TFW and ATW finished, with Arriva Trains Wales' last hurrah being a desperate attempt to stop backlash on the already ceased operator. So, since 2018, how have Transport for Wales done in changing Welsh travel? Well, the new Class 197s, Class 230s, Mark IV coaches and Class 231s have been an overall upgrade to the old pacers and sprinters they replaced. However, all units have had their criticisms and praises. Services took a hit in Covid and the franchise was nationalised in 2021, so are not at the stage TFW envisioned them to be at, although frequency is adequate and roughly the same as ATW's. Another thing that is the same as it was under Reva Trains Wales is the overcrowding. Although all of TFW's stock had been refurbished and all the Pacers, Class 170s and Class 175s had been replaced, at the time of recording, by a newer fleet, overcrowding is still a huge issue on the network. Constant short forms, especially on Manchester to Cardiff services, where five car loco sets are sometimes replaced by two car class 150s, have led to huge overcrowding, with the withdrawal of the Pacers and 175s ironically causing more issues than solutions. Yes, the Pacers were terrible trains, but the services in the valleys do need some temporary improvements, with most local services across Cardiff being two car class 150s. The withdrawal of Class 769s also hasn't helped. The South Wales Metro should fix these issues, but new Class 756s and Class 398s aren't expected to begin service for the next few years, so the overcrowding issues will remain. The Class 150s are now around their 40th birthdays, and are desperately inadequate at running commuter services, and sometimes regional services, across the country. Although Transport for Wales have and will make improvements, at the time of recording, the operator is not perfect, although they are by no means a bad operator. Anyways, back to Arriva Trains Wales. In conclusion, can Arriva Trains Wales be classified as a failed franchise? Well, legally, no. Their franchise wasn't stripped from them, and they had a relatively successful 15 years, finishing their tenure as the most reliable operator in Great Britain, and completing some major infrastructure and rolling stock projects. However, we can't overlook the severe overcrowding and just general poor service Arriva provided over the 15 years. For some commuting under Arriva Trains Wales, it was a torrid experience, especially in and around Cardiff, although it's not like things have improved for a huge amount of people since TFW took over. Hence why I would say that Arriva Trains Wales isn't a failed franchise. But you could debate that. Personally, I never went on Arriva Trains Wales, but looking at it, the franchise agreement was to blame. Arriva themselves didn't do anything wrong necessarily and did follow through with promises. It was just the contract was poorly written and didn't realise the huge passenger growth that would occur, hence the huge overcrowding. But as I never travelled on the company, at least I wasn't able to remember it, I can't at all say what my thoughts are. Perhaps you can though. Thank you so much for watching this fourth instalment of my failed franchises series. Do make sure you check out the previous free episodes and any of my other videos that you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.